What's going on, everyone? Happy Wednesday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Wednesday edition of the Pandemic Update for Wednesday, June 12th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and any other virus that could be a health threat to you. Let's face it, there are a lot of different viruses out there, and we seem to be finding out new information about these viruses each and every day. Some old, some newer, some that are starting to change how they spread, H5N1, for example. It keeps spreading amongst dairy, cattle, and farms. That's a problem. So you need to be informed with what is going on with all these viruses. The best way to do that, subscribe to my channel down below. If you like the content you see, give it a thumbs up. If you want to share this, share this with anyone you know, hit that notification bell. Because if you hit that bell, you'll be notified when I do my daily update. And of course, leave your comments down below. All right, we do have a few news stories to talk about today then we're going to take a look at some of our daily data and i'm going to mix in some things that we have not looked at in quite some time uh, such as philadelphia which only updates once a month for wastewater well that new wastewater update did finally come in starting off with h5n1 bird flu found at three more dairy farms in idaho taking the state's total to 22 and you can see on this map here things are starting to fill in all the sites in red do represent areas that have had outbreaks. Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, Kansas, South Dakota, Wyoming, Idaho, Minnesota, Iowa, Michigan, Ohio, North Carolina, all have been reporting dairy farm outbreaks, and the numbers have been continuing to increase, and the number of states have been continuing to increase. Already, we do have some celebrity health news to report on today. Oprah Winfrey was hospitalized with stomach flu. Stuff was coming out of both ends, Gail. King says, and she was supposed to or expected to appear on CBS Mornings the other day, but that obviously did not happen as she was hospitalized for a relatively violent stomach bug. Now, I have heard other reports saying she is out of the hospital now. I will keep you updated on this if I find out anything else. We'll have another update on this again tomorrow as to whether or not that is true. All right, taking a look at this. Thailand. Almost 3,000 people were hospitalized for COVID-19 last week. 2,762 people were hospitalized for COVID treatment from June 2nd through the 8th, an average of 395 people a day. The number increased by 48.3% from May 26th to June 1st. That is relatively concerning. Moving on to this now. Los Angeles City Council votes to end COVID-19 vaccination policy for city employees. Who knew that they still had a policy in LA? I can raise my hand and say I did not because most places have dropped all COVID like mandates or restrictions or whatever from 2020, 2021, 2022. So to see something like this that was still in a policy that is relatively surprising after all we do have north carolina and i should tell you about this today north carolina in the house has passed that mask ban the wording has changed a little bit but uh, the ban has passed and it is going to be passed on to the governor we'll see if he vetoes it or we'll see if he signs it into law but yeah once again uh, los angeles here is ending their vaccination policy for all workers which means those who had to, you know, leave or, or let go because they did not get vaccinated, they technically probably could reapply for their job once again. Taking a look at the pollen levels in the United States, we do see here that 54% of the country is in medium status for pollen levels. Oregon and Washington and Northern California continue to be especially bad. Red continues up in Oregon, and the plains, the northern plains and central plains, and portions of the Rockies, you're in the moderate level today as well. Taking a look at what's going on with air qualities, and I do need to refresh this. This site has been freezing up on me constantly. I don't know why it keeps freezing up, because I use a very high-powered computer. And here we go. It is finally starting to come up, I think. And what you're going to see here is that there are a few areas of concern, especially here in North Carolina. 
South Carolina, Georgia, we are seeing some moderate. Some of that has started to spread into southeast Pennsylvania. Texas, you are seeing some orange and yellow. Not as bad as we were seeing late last month or earlier this month. And Louisiana, your levels are actually starting to get a little bit worse, especially around New Orleans. And on the West Coast, it's our usual hot spots. And even in portions of Oregon today, you can see here, there's some yellow starting to show up. And look at Northern California and Central California. Not so much Northern, but Central California is a little bit higher today on the yellow, oranges, and even a few reds starting to show up. And Montana, North Dakota, Wyoming, you can breathe easy. Your air quality is not too bad. Taking a look at heat related illnesses and we can see here the map is filling in and it is going to fill in a lot more probably after next week next week's update it'll fill in a little bit but after the heat that's coming next week it will fill in way more want to learn more about weather and climate well you can follow me on my climate x page which is at climate data report you can also follow me on my youtube channel that's right i have another channel climate data report where i do post daily weather and climate videos and we posted one this morning about enhanced risk of severe storms today and excessive heat that's coming next week all right moving on now philadelphia for tuesday had 788 ems incident and speaking of philadelphia i do want to show you what's going on with the latest wastewater update from philadelphia there are two labs being used here temple dash msu lab and philadelphia public health in the northeast section of the city that's my section of the city we can see here at Temple Labs, there is a slight increase. Philadelphia Public Health, ever so slightly. And Southwest, or excuse me, Southeast Water Treatment Plant is dropping at this time from both labs. And there was a slight rise on the Southwest Treatment Plant from Temple. That has since dropped. Philadelphia Public Health, just an ever so slight increase, but not really moving that much on any of these. We're not really seeing big increases. Probably the biggest increase would be this uh, Northeast Water Treatment Plant from Temple Labs. Other than that, not too bad. Taking a live look in at Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, and we can see here not one, not two, not three, four respiratory emergencies right now, and a bunch of other calls, 15 calls total, hopefully less busy in Chester County, and now I'm seeing quite a few calls here, just one respiratory emergency call there, a sick person call, stroke, uh, we do see maternity labor pain, so maybe someone is having a baby right now. If you are, congratulations. And taking a look here, falls, lifts, assists. So there are a few things going on in Chester County, Pennsylvania right now. Taking a look at what's going on with Walgreens, as you know, as we've been saying for the last several days, this week's update, the positivity rate is 27.1% for COVID. The prior week was 22.9%. That's a difference of up 4.2%. Testing 4,213 versus 3,512. And let's just take a look at a couple states. Tennessee at this time is 21.9%. The prior week was 14.8%. That is up 7.1%, with testing being up 128 versus 81. Taking a look, let's uh, try and be positive here for a second. Here we go. Kansas City, 22.6% this week, and the prior week was 30%. That's down by 7.4%. Total test, 31 versus 20, and we'll do one more state. Let's see what is going on in Delaware. I don't think we've looked at Delaware this week. Delaware's positivity rate, if we can get on it, Delaware is 26.7% this week. Last week was 22.2%. Difference of up 4.4%. 15 tests, though, versus 18. And you know what? Why we're at it, I want to look at New Jersey. And I'll show you why we're looking at New Jersey in just a couple moments. 21.8% positivity rate this week. The prior week was 21.3%. Difference of up 0.5%. 156 tests versus 136. And the reason why we're looking at New Jersey is because, well, let's just skip ahead here. We'll do something a little bit different today. New Jersey's hospitalizations today, 200. So it did go up a little bit. The number of people on a ventilator is 9. Discharge is 27. Number of people in the ICU is at 24. And 69 out of 70 hospitals did report today in New Jersey. Moving on now to a look at wastewater, and I want to show you what's going on in Massachusetts. Massachusetts is starting to go back up once again. 
When we take a look at the COVID levels for Massachusetts, we can see in wastewater that Massachusetts levels are on the increase once again. They have attempted to rise several times and then dropped, but the overall trajectory now is starting to go upward. It's saying here that the levels are high. I don't know if that's actually true. Sometimes I don't always believe the uh, level that they show. Sometimes it's not high. It's really just moderate. But either way, your levels over time, even with the slight drops, are over a period of time going upward. Once again, RSV is low. Influenza A is low. Influenza B is low. HMPV is also low. It's saying high, but you can see here it's not rising much. And norovirus, uh, this is high, my friends. Norovirus is around 100, even though it's gradually dropping. Uh, 100,000, that is, yeah, 100,000 pathogens, that's pretty high. Let's also take a look at what's going on in Millbury, Massachusetts. Aha, take a look at this. A much bigger rise going on here, and this is a decent-sized wastewater site. 250,000 population, and you can see that is going upward. Taking a look here at what's going on RSV, not really many issues with that. Influenza A, Influenza B, both low at this time. HMPV, rising ever so slightly, and norovirus is high here as well, though dropping somewhat. MPOX, no detections of that, and hepatitis A, not much in the way of detections. As a matter of fact, no detections of that at this time. Now let's go down to the south, and let's see what is going on down in New Orleans, shall we? And we'll go to this uh, wastewater site that's further to the west, West Bank it's called. Take a look at this, New Orleans wastewater. It is starting to rise once again. RSV, Influenza A, and Influenza B, all no issues. HMPV is low at this time, and norovirus here as well is around 100,000 pathogens. Mpox, there have been two detections of that back in April, and some detections of hepatitis A at this time as well. Now I want to show you something else. Take a look here in the United States Emergency Department visits for COVID, and you can see here they have been starting to trend upward once again, which is not a good thing. It's not a massive increase, but it is a steady increase. Let's take a look at a few other states. Not all states are rising, but some are. You can see in Delaware, emergency department visits for people with COVID-19 is on the increase. Florida, we showed you this the other day. We'll get an update on all this on Friday. Florida is a bit more moderate with their increase at this time. Let's come down here to somewhere on the West Coast now, shall we? How about we go to Washington State. What's going on there? Look at this. Washington State COVID emergency department visits. You know, people who are positive for COVID. They are really starting to go upward. Wow, that is relatively impressive. Let's take a look. How about we go back to the Northeast? Is Vermont seeing an increase at this time? Eventually, Vermont will load. And we can see Vermont is not seeing much of an increase at all at this time. They are actually just remaining flat. And let's do one more state. We'll go out somewhere in the middle section of the country. How about we see what's going on in Kansas? Remember, when we used to do the hospital capacity videos, Kansas was usually pretty good with that. And, okay, so they did see a rise. Looks like that rise peaked. And now Kansas is starting to see a drop for hospital people showing up at the emergency department who are positive for COVID. Taking a look at some other data from the CDC. We can see here that the KP.3 variant is the leading variant at this time. KP.2 comes in second. KP.3 is at 25%. KP.2 at 22.5%. LB.1, which is a brand, another branch off of the JN.1 variant, is at 14.9%. And that old JN.1 variant, it's now down to just 3.1%. Why? Because we are in variant soup, and there's a whole slew of variants that are increasing at this time. When we take a look at epidemic status, we do see there's only one place that is declining right now. And that is in Oklahoma. Everywhere else is stable, uncertain, not estimated, and of course, likely growing and growing at this time. Now, finally, moving on to New York State. New York State added another 644 cases today. And when we take a look at the hospitalizations, we do want to take a look at a couple things. First off, we do see here hospitalizations statewide have rose from 530 to 565. That's a bit more of an increase than uh, one would have expected because, you know, on a Tuesday, usually when they drop on a Tuesday, that's a very good sign, but that's not the case here. Today, they did rise to 565, and yet again, the number in the ICU did rise to 59, and that has been continuously rising since back on June 
third. So you can see here, there's a continuous rise now in the number of people in the ICU. Let's also take a look at New York City. Let's wait for this to refresh. It's going to reload. And you'll see here that when we look at New York City, that seems to be where the biggest increase is occurring in New York State at this time. Let's uh, put this down to six months, make it easier to see. And you can see here, look at this. Yesterday, they had 226 hospitalizations and 31 people in the ICU in New York City. Fast forward to today. Take a look at this. It's now at 260. So, yeah, that went up by 34 for hospitalizations. And the number of people in the ICU went up by 4 to 35. When we take a look at hospital admissions in New York City, we can see here the hospital admissions in New York City, they're starting to increase a little bit faster. From my understanding, New York City updates on Thursday, if memory serves me correct. Someone let me know down below. New York City individually updates on Thursday, and I think that's why we sometimes see more cases reported in New York State on Thursdays, because obviously New York City is getting added in. So we'll have to see what happens tomorrow when that happens. And let's go back to the statewide level for just a moment and take a look at statewide hospital admissions. And you can see here, statewide, they are gradually starting to go upward all across New York State. So it's something we're going to have to continue to watch. It had looked like the cases may have been slowing off. But as we all know, a lot of people just do not test that much right now. And let's go back to Walgreens just for a second. We can see here, Walgreens was seeing a pretty big increase and positivity rate it was 39.2 percent in new york state the prior week was 32.4 percent that was up by 6.8 percent it was only five tests less 97 versus 102 i know new york state is a big huge state and that's not much testing but 6.8 percent i think some of that also accounts for maybe once again another increase in cases and if we went back to wastewater i would show you one other thing there have been some places that have been going up, then they would go down a little bit, then they start going up again. Remember, we looked at Boston just a little bit ago. Look at the case there. They looked like they peaked, then they dropped. Then they started rising again. Then they looked like they peaked, then they dropped. Wash, rinse, repeat. Could be something that's happening in New York State right now. Just given that today, suddenly, the hospitalizations did go a little bit higher. Something else to keep in mind, New York State or in any place, hospitalizations do lag cases so we'll have to wait a little longer and see what happens of course it'll be very interesting to see what happens when new york city does release their update tomorrow i'll try and see if i can pull up their dashboard and have that for you tomorrow Alrighty, folks that does it for the wednesday edition of the pandemic update we'll have another pandemic update again tomorrow if you like this video give it a thumbs up want to see more content just like this and want to stay informed subscribe down below Want to help keep others informed? Share these videos with anyone you know. Leave your comments down below and hit that notification bell. You will know when we do our latest updates. Alrighty, folks, I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Wednesday afternoon. Thanks for watching.